Hi, and welcome to this mini course on VLMs or vision language models, which is a step towards having images as input with text to output you know, more text so you can ask questions about an image. Um, this is really exciting since this is, was the first step towards multimodal models. Uh, and I'll describe a little bit of the impacts and how to run it on AMD Developer Cloud. So specifically, we'll be looking into OCR, or optical character recognition, um, of using VLMs uh, for, for that long-standing task, but also share a little bit more of what else you can do with these powerful language models. Um, so first, why? Why would you want to use this stuff? Well, wouldn't it be cool to copy a fo photo of your coffee cup from Starbucks, for example, and be able to order, you know, be able to order from there and be like, hey, I want the same thing as this person. Take a snapshot and get the text from it and then automatically order something. Um, you could also imagine getting ingredients from a nutrition label. I often go buy food and I just want to know, you know, what are all the ingredients and I want to put it in to some, um, you know, ingredient looker to see if I'm allergic to anything or how healthy certain ingredients are or how simple they are. And finally, um, you could copy words uh, you don't know from a menu and look them up. So you can easily just take a photo of a menu and it'll be able to figure out and parse all, all the words there. And maybe it's, you know, Italian and don't know all the words on that fancy menu. Um, and you wanna go put that into some kind of translation app after. Um, so these are, you know, use cases for VLMs. Um, so exactly what's happening under the hood though, right? You wanna go a level deeper. So first, we're all kind of familiar with large language models, right? You input text, um, you encode that text, um, you turn them into tokens, and then uh, you learn a representation of those tokens. So you learn um, how to, the model learns how to um, output the next token based on all the tokens it's seen before. And from that process, it learns a lot of general knowledge about text and understanding, and that's why we think they're so powerful and intelligent. And for a vision language model, it's slightly different, right? It still has that text as input and text as output, but now you have an image input um, in addition to the text. And what that image is doing, you wanna encode that image, those pixels, into some kind of uh, tokenized representation as well, a different type, you know, different type of tokens, different kind of encoding, but it turns into some kind of vector representation, and then you turn that into some kind of embedding as well. And specifically, you want to be able to embed it in a way where you can easily combine it with your text embeddings. So these are both vectors, and you want them to be similar shapes so that you can actually be able to combine them easily. And then once they're combined, you can, you know, learn additional things on top of that, which is their combined uh, inputs to produce the next token output of text. Um, and that's your text output. Here's a very simple example. You might have a picture of a tree, uh, you know, this tropical tree, and you know, the word word, the word tree is gonna embed hopefully very closely to this image um, or um, be able to offer similar, you know, tokens and embedding space to this image. Uh, and it's also able to then output relevant tokens based on your text input. Um, and an LLM is not able to do this well because it can't encode images in, right? So it can't actually uh, take these images in, these pixels in, and turn them into tokens because those are not even in your vocabulary, only text tokens are. But a VLM can. So a VLM, you can take this same image and you can ask a question, how many trees are in this photo? And it's, you know, embedding, you know, tree in there, but it's also embedding this question so you can ask semantically what's going on. And then it's able to produce text output, each token out there, and say there's one tree or one, right? And so it's able to produce something sensical out of that because the LLM piece is really thinking through um, that representation. It's really thinking through that concept just as a regular LLM. Combining this with OCR is pretty critical. OCR, optical character recognition, it's been around for a super long time to automatically read receipts or automatically read a scanned document of a PDF or a paper, you know, paper page um, and be able to take that handwritten content or messy content and some uh, text in some way and be able to transfer that into something digital. And so that's been around for a super long time. 
Um, so instead of, you know, a handwritten note, perhaps, maybe we're writing something in the sand. Um, so here is the word love written in the sand. Um, and to programmatically extract the word love, that's a pretty difficult task. It can show up in a lot of different ways, a lot of different fonts, um, and it could be hard to read in some instances. So being able to extract this is a very powerful task. So a VLM can actually do do this, right? So it can you can say extract the text from the Im this image or what is written in the sand in this image, and it should be able to take this image and then be able to produce the word love. And the strength of VLM-based OCR is it's able to handle pretty uh, complex scenarios and it's able to understand almost the context a bit better. And you're able to ask pretty complex questions uh, of the actual image. Instead of, you know, traditional OCR-based systems, it just, all it did was OCR. You, you weren't a asking any kind of like general questions. It's just extracting text. But here you can actually ask questions that are relevant to you about this, about this image, and it can produce the uh, output that you desire. So if you only cared about that tree previously, for example, or how many trees, it would just say one tree, as opposed to saying there's a sky, there's this, 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 right? So um, that's what's really powerful. Now for OCR, um, you can ask questions of something written down on a notepad from a meeting, like how to request time off, right? Um, or request PTO. Um, so just, it's able to make this process much, much easier. And so it's a very, very powerful model to combine these two types of inputs. Uh, so a fun little thing. Um, so as a team, we went out onto the beach and actually wrote out something on the sand. Uh, I love AI. <laughs> Amazing. And then the water rushed out and it, it got some of the I love part. So let's go test some of this out. So the original I love AI. So seeing this, um, a VLN based system might uh, try to try to figure out like what exactly is being written here. Is it I love AI? Is it I love Al? Well, hopefully it has enough contextual information that it does see that, you know, love is capitalized. So therefore AI is probably going to be capitalized, right, as well. Um, and it understands this contextual area of like it's in the sand, so it might not be super clear um, in terms of what is uh, what's being written. And it might have seen other things written in the sand before as well. Um, so hopefully it's able to extract I love AI. Well, let's give it a spin in the AMD developer cloud. So you can just run this notebook super easily. It's already out there. Um, and you can run this VLM uh, here. Uh, it's Llama 3.2. Uh, and it was able to extract I love Avi. Oh man, so <laughs> probably more likely, right? From probabilistic point of view to write I love Avi, a person's name rather than I love AI, but I do love AI and I hope that VLM can get it next time, um, but it's still very powerful that it was able to extract that and that is probably the more likely thing being written in the sound. It's also very robust. Um, what I find really interesting about these models is how robust they are. So we tested it with, you know, the water washing away, the I love piece and seeing whether the model can actually still um, detect uh, pieces of that text. And it turns out when we run the notebook, uh, it actually was able to extract love still, which is really impressive. Uh, so applications of VLM-based OCR uh, extend even further to, you know, healthcare, for example. Um, so uploading handwritten notes from your doctor, which might be borderline legible, um, but taking those and being able to then transcribe those automatically um, and uh, uploading them so that you can search them or give them to nurses or patients themselves. Um, being able to read and process different shipping labels or, you know, things that have been be beaten up as it's being shipped to you, but still being able able to, to read that very effectively, that's important as well. Um, and finally, just digitizing historical documents or, or articles. So with that, I hope you give it a spin. Go try it out on AMD's Developer Cloud and tell us what you built. I'm really excited to hear, hear about it. And feel free to ping us for some free credits. Just mention this course. <laughs>